The Rose Windows for the Holy Trinity Church in Shanghai. The rose windows can be seen as the crown for the windows of the east and west transepts of the church. The theme for the east transept is God the Father and the Old Testament. The theme for the rose window is the six days of creation. For the west transept, the theme is the Holy Spirit and the New Testament, the rose showing symbolically the descent of the Holy Spirit and the seven gifts of the Spirit. This is the second phase of the project for the Holy Trinity in Shanghai and is a collaboration between the Derg Studios and myself. The windows are now installed in the building and won't change much in hundreds of years. But how were they made? As with most manufactured things, it all begins with a design. The themes had been discussed and agreed in collaboration with the church. A design is a skilled drawing and in many ways the most important part of a project as the design contains the idea and the composition and some sense of the colouring. The design allows the concept to be discussed and any suggestions and alterations can be made at this stage. Once the designs have been agreed then the full scale work can begin. It is vital that the windows fit well into the existing openings and therefore paper templates are made. For each opening a template. In the case of the rose windows, what previously was there was only a chipboard frame with normal window glass and a plastic foil was applied to the glass as a temporary decoration. In this case, we provided a full scale template of the shape that the window would finally have. The final shape of the window was made in stone. Using the same template, the full scale drawing can be made. Although the drawings are based on the original designs, the drawing develops as a new artwork and changes happen within the full scale drawing phase. There was quite a lapse of time between creating the original design and making the full-scale drawing, so the ideas mature and develop over this time. Tracings are made from these drawings, and the tracings are the basis for most of the making of the windows. This tracing contains information crucial to cutting, etching, painting and leading. The first important use for these drawings is to define the shapes of the individual pieces of glass. This red line is the line where the glass will be cut and these will later become lead lines when the window is completed. Using this drawing, templates are made for the individual pieces of glass. The knife used to cut the templates has two blades. The small strip that is removed is taken up with the heart of the lead at a later stage. The glass used in this project is manufactured in Germany by a wonderful company called Lambert's Glass who produce the most beautiful glass in the world. The red-blue glass for this project was specially manufactured and each sheet of this glass is different. Therefore, it's important that I go there and select the particular sheets that I need. What a wonderful and complex process is involved, even in the making of the sheets of glass.
Although I go to Lambert's whenever I'm working on a project, I am always astonished by the process. A few days later, I'm back in the studio, the templates are finished and I can begin placing them on the selected sheets of glass. Again, with this special red-blue glass, the placing is very important and I often need to wait as glass is cut before I can select another piece or several pieces as they all need to relate to each other. Everything involved in the making of these windows is done by hand. There's almost nothing that can be mechanised. The glass is cut to fit the template and sometimes it is better to grind out awkward shapes. With this special red-blue glass, the placing is very important and often I need to wait as glass is cut before I can select another piece or several pieces as they all need to relate to each other. Once all the pieces are cut, the glass is then prepared for the next stage of the process by covering it with a plastic foil. This foil protects the glass during etching, immersion in acid. This allows shapes to be etched into the colour, either partially or completely. The glass used is called flash glass and is made in two layers. A thin layer of colour that is fused onto a thicker layer of usually clear white glass during the making process. This thin coloured layer is what can be partially or completely etched away using the acid. This plastic foil can easily be cut and peeled off, revealing the surface of the glass that is then etched. For most of the projects I make, the etching is the most important stage. I tend to etch many times to achieve a range of tones and create the drawing of the elements contained within a window. It is a constant process of etching and replacing and looking at the glass pieces on the drawing to make sure everything is working and everything is balanced.
A second type of acid resist was also used in places throughout this project. This is a bitumen-like substance that can be painted onto the glass and gives a much more painterly quality to the etching. Etching is probably the most difficult process. You have to be very careful. Firstly, the acid and even the fumes are very dangerous. Secondly, if you etch too much off, you have to start again with a new piece of glass. Once all the etching is completed, and I think that the stage is finished, all the plastic foil and the traces of bitumen have to be removed and the glass cleaned. And now the painting can begin. Usually, when I refer to painting, I mean only a black or dark brown pigment that is used to create lines or half tones. This paint does not add any colour to the glass. The painting adds definition to the forms and can be pronounced or very subtle. When first applied, the paint is very easy to remove and therefore it has to be fired onto the surface of the glass to make it permanent, just like in ceramics. This firing bonds the pigment to the surface of the glass and acid is needed to remove the paint once it has been fired. I often do two or more layers of painting and several firings to achieve the qualities I am looking for. The firing usually happens overnight, as the glass needs many hours to slowly cool down again. Once again, all the pieces of glass are returned to the drawing on the light table. There is one other ancient technique in this traditional form of glass painting that has been used since the 14th century, and that is silver staining. You will possibly have noticed that in the final windows there are yellows and greens, but as I have been working on these windows, there is no yellow and no green. This is what silver staining does. It turns white glass yellow and blue glass green. Whereas all the etching and painting take place on the inside of the glass, the silver stain is traditionally painted onto the outside. When fired, it becomes part of the fabric of the glass, and again, it would need quite strong acid to remove it. With the silver staining, 
my part of the making process comes to an end. The studio now takes care of assembling the individual pieces and transforming them into completed windows. They are assembled using each section lead and the joints of these leads are soldered together. Finally, the completed windows are cemented using putty. This has the effect of both strengthening and waterproofing the windows. The windows were then safely packaged and sent to Shanghai. A few weeks later, the installation within the church took place. It was a relief to see the crate safely there and undamaged by the journey. Philip, who has been involved in the project since the beginning, was in Shanghai to carry out the installation. All of the other panels were installed first, leaving just the two rose windows to complete the work. The church had arranged for a wonderful ramp construction to be built. This allowed for the completed windows to be easily carried up to the location where they would be installed. This was the moment of truth as to whether the preparation and the sending of the drawings and templates would pay off. It was a delight to see the window that had been made in one piece slipping perfectly into the opening. Once the panels were fitted, a mortar bead was applied to the stone, holding the windows safely in place.
างเขาเรื่องเล็กๆนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นเมื่อสักพักหนึ่งการสร้างสกาฟโฟลดิ้งถูกแก้ไขและการสร้างสกาฟโฟลดิ้งถูกแก้ไข